now we go to the definition of second principle focus second principle focus which we are going to denote it by capital f2 is simply defined as a point to which rays parallel to principal axis converges or a point on optical axis from where rays appear to come that is called second principal focus again here will be making substitution u will be substituted as infinity and whatever we get as v will be second principal focal length making substitution in the basic relation for refraction from spherical refracting surface we get the value of second principal focal length and it is mu2 r divided by mu2 minus mu1 and we can see very clearly for convex spherical refracting surface second principal focus will be in the denser medium and here denser medium is mu2 and mu1 is rarer medium and second principal focal length will be positive for concave spherical refracting surface second principal focus will lie in rarer medium and the corresponding focal length that is f2 will be negative it is very obvious now we can develop a relation between these two focal length that is first principal focal length and second principal focal length now making use of the definition which we have derived just now we get a very simple relationship that is f2 divided by v plus f1 divided by u is equal to 1 so this is a very simple relation relating first principal focal length and second principal focal length now in numerical problems we are rarely going to use these terms as first principal focal length and second principal focal length i have just explained these terms because these are the basic points related with a spherical refracting surface and we should know them very accurately and exactly now we enter into the magnification formula we have already derived object image distance equation for spherical refracting surface we are going to make use of it and we will derive the expression for magnification when refraction is taking place at curved surface which is exclusively in our case is spherical now we take an object as it is given in the figure and we would like to trace its image now to trace the image we need to consider any two refracting rays now to find the image of bottom of the point object here our object is an arrow the tip of the arrow is denoted by p1 and the bottom of the arrow is denoted by p and its height is h1 now we consider a ray from p going along principal axis now this ray will go undeviated let's take another ray from bottom of the object and it hits refracting surface at point a and after refraction it goes into denser medium and meets the principal axis at point q now q is the corresponding image of point p similarly we can consider two rays from the tip of the object that is p1 we consider one ray passing through center of curvature so we know by definition any ray passing through center of curvature will go undeviated so this ray goes undeviated passing through center of curvature and we take another ray from p1 and it is hitting the pole which is m in this case and it is refracted into the denser medium and angle of refraction will be definitely lesser than angle of incidence and then we look at the meeting of these two refracted rays which meet at point q1 so q q1 is our corresponding image we can see it is inverted in this case and we are denoting the height of image by h2 
Let's mark the angle of incidence, angle of refraction. We are marking other angles. Alpha 1 and alpha 2. Now, from similar triangles, CPP 1 and CQ Q1, we get a very simple relationship. QQ1 over PP1 is equal to QC over PC, which I can write it as MQ minus MC and PC I can write in denominator as MP plus PC. Now making substitution with proper sign convention, we get minus H2 over H1 is equal to V minus R divided by in denominator minus u plus r and this can be rearranged and we get h2 over h1 is equal to v minus r over u minus r. Now by definition this h2 over h1 is the magnification of image that is the height of image upon height of object this we call it magnification. Students are required to remember this equation and here magnification is obvious, it is transverse magnification that we are talking about. This transverse magnification is also known as lateral magnification. Now here we have written magnification in terms of object and image distance. Now this Expression for magnification can be modified and it can be written in another way also. Now if we make use of Snell's law that says mu1 sin theta will be equal to mu2 sin r. Now making small angle approximation and we can replace sin of angles by corresponding tangent of their angle. So we get a very simple relationship that says m is equal to mu1 v upon mu2 u. Now this is again for paraxial rays. The necessary mathematics is worked out on the screen. Please go through it. So we have another form of magnification.